Hi, and welcome back. I'm on page 16 of the work text, and if you're following along in a textbook, we're on page 45. We're looking at some weather terms this time, and I want to go through these. I'll move as quickly as I can. I know this is not very exciting, but I will try to give you some information as we go that will help you understand these, and if you see them on the test, you will know what they are. The first one is an air mass, and the definition of an air mass is a large body of air This also helps you with writing when it's time for the essay. You will be used to writing a lot. So, a large body of air with uniform characteristics. And that means that it's the same throughout. That there aren't hot spots or cold spots, that the whole mass is similar in its characteristics. A large body of air with uniform characteristics. A current is a body of water moving in one direction. Rivers have currents. Oceans have currents. A rip current in the ocean is extremely dangerous because that water is moving in one direction and it will take you with it. So a current is a body of water. An earthquake is an event resulting from, so they're about to tell me what causes an earthquake. An event resulting from a shifting of tectonic plates. And you might be thinking, what in the world is a tectonic plate? The surface of the earth, the crust of the earth, is made up of large chunks of land. They sort of look like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. They fit together some, or a turtle's back, if you've ever seen a turtle's back. So the whole earth crust is made up of these plates. And these plates are moving. They may bump against each other, they may slide apart. They're moving on that melted rock in the mantle. These are called tectonic plates. And when those plates hit each other, if they one slides under another plate, you get the formation of mountains. Earthquakes occur when they move against each other or slide past each other. So you, you sort of need to understand the term tectonic plates to understand what an earthquake is. And I'm going to have to move this because I need that space for, let me resize it a little bit. I won't take it out because that helps you remember what they're talking about. Focus is the area of energy release. in the earth that causes an earthquake. Okay. So this is where the earthquake is based. If the ground is shaking, it's coming from a focus, from an area where the earthquake originates. And this is the area down in the ground where the energy released that started the earthquake. 
Okay, the next one, and I have skipped one. We'll have to go back and get that one. But the next one in your book is humidity. Humidity is the amount of moisture in the air. If you go outside in Tennessee in July, you're probably going to experience humidity. Your skin feels kind of damp or sweaty because there's a lot of water, a lot of moisture in the air. And this is very common in the southeastern United States, especially inland away from the oceans. There's a lot of humidity. A hurricane, I'm sure you have heard of that, but let's break down what it actually is. It is a large, low-pressure system. So the barometric pressure is low in a hurricane. With organized circulation. The more organized the hurricane, the stronger it's going to be. Once it gets all of its wind spinning together, that's organized and it is an incredibly strong system. But it is associated with low barometric pressure. The Richter scale is a scale used to measure the magnitude of an earthquake. Magnitude is strength. You could say the strength of an earthquake. And the scale is from one to 10. If the earthquake measures a one, we probably don't, e we wouldn't even feel it on the surface of the earth. If it measures a 10, it's going to level mountains. It's going to be devastating. So the higher the number, the stronger the earthquake. Seismic waves. And let me give you the sound pronunciation of seismic. It's seismic. Seismic. Seismic waves are waves that carry the energy released from an earthquake. If you jump down to the bottom of your page here, I have drawn you a picture of seismic waves. So let's jump down here. Uh, remember our focus is where the earthquake originates. So here's the focus of the earthquake. This is where the break in the rock occurred. And then these loopy looking things are the seismic waves. So these are high energy seismic waves. You notice that they're close together, they're tall, they're moving fast. And then you have middle energy. The waves start to get longer in the middle energy. And then the low energy waves are going to be long and slow waves. So you can see by this diagram, the closer to the focus, the higher the energy. So where would you expect damage to occur in an earthquake? Would most damage occur close to that focus or far away from that focus? Well, it's gonna be close because these are the waves that are moving fast. They're the destructive waves. As the waves slow down, they start to become less of a threat. That doesn't mean they're not dangerous. It just means that they're slowing down and they're losing some of that energy. Okay, the last term that's on your page is tsunami. And let me give you the pronunciation for this. 
It is su nom e. Tsunami. This is basically a tidal wave. It is a set of ocean waves. triggered by an earthquake. There was a tsunami that occurred in Indonesia um, some years back because there was an earthquake out in the ocean. It was like a magnitude 8, I believe. And they said that if you were walking along the beach right before the tsunami came, the ocean tide went out to sea like a half a mile. You could see the bottom of the ocean way out there for a long time because the earth had shifted and there was an earthquake and that tsunami was building. It was pulling that ocean water back and then it pushed it forward in the form of a tidal wave that killed tens of thousands of people. So tsunamis are very dangerous. If you live in a coastal area and there is a tsunami warning, you need to pay attention to that. It's very serious stuff. One term that I did not put on your page, but I need to, is the word front. This relates to weather. A front is the boundary where two air masses meet. Okay. So you may have a low pressure and a high pressure meeting at a front boundary or a cold mass and a, a warm mass meeting at a frontal boundary. And this is where thunderstorms will very often occur. When those two different masses are colliding with each other, you can get severe weather along those frontal boundaries. Okay, this is a very good introduction to weather terms, and in the next video, I will show you how to understand the water cycle. So I'll see you back soon, and we will be on page 17 in the next video.